Edge Technologies is at its origins a real estate developer for highly sustainable office buildings. And what differentiates us is that we are extremely driven by innovation and want to drive innovation in our industry. Initially, offices have been very much kind of like factories for the clergy. They're very much about productivity, about ability just to have people work somewhere and get you know, a lot of work done very intensively. So we're moving away from that factory mindset of the last centuries more and more into what are the people inside the building really needing? What drives them? What drives the employee? What drives the person which comes to work every day? So the ability to put sensors throughout the building to understand what's going on and then using that data to help the building to perform better for the people inside, those are basically the two main ingredients. And then ideally, and you can only achieve that in some buildings, is having actually the technology and hardware in the building then to react to that intelligence, to actually make changes, adjust things, adjust lighting, adjust temperature, automatically based upon that data and the computing which is happening. If we look specifically at the protocols which have now been kind of installed in a lot of offices due to COVID, um, we see that smart buildings have a huge advantage to compared to other office buildings. And the main thing is that we know what's happening in the building. We have very good data understanding, okay, how's the building been used in the past? what have been the usage patterns in the building, and therefore have a good understanding of what tweaks and changes we need to make to make it accommodating for that new protocols. Um, and also understanding how much people we can allow in a certain space. How much ventilation do we need at minimum to make sure that people have a low chance of being affected. And those changes can be made very easily in a smart building. So whereas in other buildings you would maybe have to do hardware changes or more invasive things, um, in a smart building, you can do a lot of things just with a couple of codes and a press of a button. Um, what we see there is that there's specific data, which we also just learn now as we learn more about the pandemic, which is key to tell us how safe space can be. Um, one of them is CO2. CO2 is an excellent indicator to tell you if there's sufficient ventilation in the space to avoid a lot of aerosols to be around. So we measure CO2 um, and we, are, we bring that data to people in the rooms and say, hey, we see that the CO2 level is above a certain threshold, um, it's safer for you to step out of the room. So now the building can no longer ventilate sufficiently in that room to make sure that if somebody would be infected, they would not get that infection. One important key factor for digitalization of buildings is what we call a digital twin, which is basically a virtual representation of the physical building. The great thing about digital twin is that this allows us to basically store the data about all the components of a building so that even during the lifetime of that building, that data could be then reused later. So this is how data is not just important immediately now, but also if a building would fall apart or be, have to be taken apart after 50 years because it becomes obsolete, um, we can make sure that even the components of that building can have a second life after that. And today it's COVID, next year it might be something else. We're basically seeing that the ability to, to get data and useful data out of a building and being able to understand what that means, so not just huge chunks of data, whatever data that may be, is really showing its value and that value has been accelerated um, over the last months due to the pandemic because urgencies have increased.